Welcome back. Habitat for Humanity on the Border has had several successful builds over the last number of years, and now a group from Vermilion is planning one of their own for this summer. Habitat for Humanity has been going strong in Canada since the early 80s, and the Woodminster chapter was one of the first to open a restore, but now they're expanding into Vermilion, and that's why Bryce Ashton Mayo is here to explain that kind of stuff to us. What's going on in Vermilion this summer with Habitat? Uh, well, we're in the process of uh, getting ready to potentially do a build in the summer in Vermilion. Uh, we, uh, you know, probably about a couple years ago, there was some interest in building a habitat home in Vermilion, and probably around a year ago, I'd heard about the interest and I uh, thought, you know, let's kind of get this thing rolling and uh, beginning making some headway. So I got a group of people together, kind of our core leadership team, our uh, committee team, uh, together and to begin planning and looking at all different aspects of the build. And we've been going strong now for for probably about a year planning and preparing and we're hoping um, to have all the funds in place to build this summer. We're trying to make sure everything else is looked after. Some of you guys were also volunteering on the Lloydminster builds over the last couple of years. Is mm -hmm. it nice to get one out in Vermilion where you guys are? Absolutely. We've been a huge supporter of, of what's happened here in Lloydminster and Vermilion and it's great to begin to look at our own community and see the affordable housing uh, situation that exists in Vermilion and that we need to do something there and this is a great long-term sustainable solution to affordable housing not just in Lloydminster but now we're looking at Vermilion as well. Do you want to maybe explain to everybody what the process is for a Habitat for Humanity build? I mean a lot of us know what it is but just so we kind of get a good overview of how the whole thing works. Absolutely. So for our community in, uh, in uh, Vermilion, um, we are what's called an adopt a home project. And so we are not our own affiliate. We come under the Lloyd Minister uh, board, the Lloyd Minister Habitat chapter. Um, but we have to raise all of our funds in place first. Um, we select our own partner family. We are involved in uh, the planning, the, the procedures, the, the construction stuff to see it happen in Vermilion. Um, so we do all that stuff in Vermilion. Um, and we look forward to building here soon. You mentioned funding in place. Funding is always a bit of an issue trying to it get is. fund a project like this. Are you guys looking for donations? How do you guys go exactly about funding a project like this? We are. We need to raise uh, a decent amount of funds. We're part way there, but we have a long ways to go. Um, we probably have in the neighborhood of sixty, seventy thousand dollars left to raise. And so what we do for that is we've contacted, you know, some individuals, businesses in Vermilion. We're doing some specific fundraisers um, in the next little bit, uh, but really looking forward to our community to step up and and uh, you know donate not just their time in the build, which we will look at soon but also in uh, cash donations as well to see that take place. Do you think that that might be a hindrance to get the whole project done? You, you don't think that financing is going to be what's going to slow the project down, do you? Uh, well, we hope not, um, but we, we have... Hope not, yeah, 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 exactly. But the, the, the challenge is, is that we need the funds in place. Um, you know, Habitat's smart. They don't want to see a home half built. You know, so they want to make sure that we have the funds in place to be in, you know, to finish the build when we start. And that totally makes sense. And speaking exactly. of being ready to go, uh, last week or the week before, we had some great news about the land was purchased. Absolutely. We got a great lot on the east side of Vermilion overlooking the River Valley. It's a beautiful lot. Almost it's a an, lot you and I would want to have. <laughs> exactly. And it's an odd shaped lot. And so uh, it works perfect for Habitat because Habitat builds a, a simple, decent home about a thousand square feet with no garage. And that's kind of what this lot serves. Um, and we got it with a gracious donation of about $25,000 from Darren Swanson. And the other $25,000 we've, we've purchased to, to purchase the full value of the lot. And now it's just a matter of, of moving forward on the rest of the project. What can someone do to get involved with uh, building a Habitat home? The easiest way for, for us, for people to respond, is to go to our website, www.habitatvermilion.ca. Um, there's a link on there that you can download a volunteer form, which allows us then to get your information. And so get your interest, what you can do. And always remember that if you can't, um, you know, you know, throw a hammer or, or use a saw or whatever. There's still lots of ways to volunteer, either with fundraising or with cooking for volunteers or lots of other things that we have. Lots of little jobs that go along at the same time, right? Absolutely. And so part of that, that's the nature of it is that we want to, um, you know, include lots of people. Well, good luck with the building. We'll be hearing a lot more from you over the course of the summer. Thank you very much. It was a great opportunity. Hey there everyone, Grayson Knutson here to take a quick look at some events happening in and around the region. The Kiwanis Club will be putting on the 8th annual Million Dollar Hole in One at the Lloydminster Golf and Country Club. Now this event runs from May 25th until the 30th and each hour the person who hits the ball closest to the pin, they will win a prize plus be invited to come back for the semifinals which goes on the final day of competition. Alberta Opera presents Hansel and Gretel at the Vic Juba Theatre on Thursday. 
27th. Now tickets are $23 a person to this great family event and you can get those by stopping by the box office in person, online or by giving them a shout. The town of Bonneville is gearing up for their annual Pro Rodeo. That goes from May 28th through to the 30th. Things get going on Friday with a chili cook-off. They'll have a parade and cabaret on Saturday. And then the final rodeo performance goes at 2 o'clock on Sunday. The local chapter of Communities in Bloom is looking ahead to the national competition and they'll be holding their annual barrel planting on Saturday, May 29th and Sunday, May 30th. That will go at the Source newspaper parking lot. You can call Barb or Sheila if you need more information about that. Alrighty, it's time to wrap things up because Dan ain't give me more time to talk about cool local events. But if you would like your event aired on a future broadcast of Around the Region, be sure to email all the information to communitycalendar at newcap.ca. I'm Grayson Knutson and this has been your regional events calendar. After the break, Carly Agro catches up with a group of gymnasts as they get ready to head off to provincial championships. That's next on Around the Region.